This script was 14 pages, but I wanted to edit it down to a more manageable length, so now it's 13 pages. Too much to say. Anyway, hi, and welcome to, or back to, my channel. I'm Kit, and today we're going to have a look at some things Lila Rose and her organization, Live Action, have to say. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Lila or any of her associates, and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content they put out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video, and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below, along with sources and resources. And now, on to the reason we're all here. Lila Rose is an anti-abortion activist who founded the anti-abortion nonprofit Live Action. In 2021, I made a video wondering where their money went, and I think I know now. It goes to merch and, how shall we say, creative interpreting of the truth. For example, in one of their articles, Judge says despite history of safety issues, abortion business can open under new ownership. You might read that and think this business has a history of safety issues, and you would be wrong. For one, this business is actually a clinic, and the article is about a clinic wanting to open in Florida. The safety issues were found in a clinic in Louisiana. And from the article, which Live Action linked in their own, the operation history of June Medical raises some concerns about their compliance with state regulations. It also raises concern about the safety of patients. However, based on the evidence of record, there was no threat or actual harm to patients. All the deficiencies proven were corrected. Based on the foregoing, the competent substantial evidence establishes that June Medical's Louisiana deficiencies did not establish a pattern of deficient performance. The judge also concluded that the current owner of the Florida clinic wasn't the owner of the Louisiana clinic, writing, even if there were evidence to support Mr. Rothrock being responsible for June Medical's performance, he clearly was not responsible for performance during the period from 2004 through 2011, which was before before he became executor of the Robin Rothrock estate. This is a common theme for live action, talking about how dirty, how dangerous abortion is. And it bears repeating that the US is ranked last for maternal mortality among developed nations. And legal abortion is safer than giving birth. And if Lila or live action cared about people after birth, they would, at the very least, be trying to improve those statistics. It doesn't have to be that way. Other countries have figured it out, why can't we? But it's not actually about saving lives. It's about outlawing abortion under the guise of saving lives. And on that note, another article is titled, Abortion Facility Escort Assaulted Pro-Life Counselor, But Police Arrested the Victim. John Ryan was attacked outside the Hope Clinic for Women in Granite City, Illinois, after verbally offering to help a woman get help instead of getting an abortion. In response, an escort screamed at him and began hitting him with her umbrella. For some reason, all their sources for this article are either live action or other conservative news outlets. I tried Operation Rescue, which seems to have links to the police report and police documents that led to nowhere. A Google search turned up nothing. But this is an interesting demonstration of how they've created their own little interconnected web of disinformation to spread their narrative. Fascinating and also concerning. If something is true, I want to know. Though I suppose if something was true, such lengths wouldn't be taken to obscure the original source. And last article because my patience for live action articles is running low, Poll reaffirms even most pro-choice Americans support restricting majority of abortions. Now, this isn't an original article, it's a repost from National Right to Life. And the poll itself was conducted on behalf of the National Right to Life by the McLaughlin Group. And they polled 1,000 likely general election voters in North Carolina. And the funniest thing to me is that, per the article, this poll showed that if the question is properly phrased, a very strong majority would allow abortion only in a very small minority of cases. Setting aside why on earth we will be voting on allowing someone health care, do we allow people to get prescription meds based on committee? Do we put organ transplants to a vote first? The apparently correct way to phrase this particular question so you get the answer you want is, would you support or oppose a law prohibiting abortion except when it is necessary to save the life of the mother or when there is a medical emergency? emergency posing serious risk of substantial irreversible physical harm to the mother or in cases of rape or incest. 57% supported such a law and 35% opposed it, even though the two questions described exactly the same proposal in different words. This same phenomenon has been found in a previous national poll testing these questions. Why such different results describing identical circumstances? It appears that a substantial segment of the population does not want unlimited abortion, but very strongly wants abortion available in cases involving the mother's life, rape or incest, or medical emergencies. Many of these voters very strongly oppose prohibiting or banning
banning abortion, which they construe as prohibiting or banning all abortion. This is why pro-abortion candidates and groups and the pro-abortion press will call any pro-life proposal, no matter how modest, a ban. To be honest, I'm a bit surprised Live Action reposted this. Lila has made it quite clear that she wants a ban and she doesn't agree with political candidates tempering their language to make themselves sound less like they're pro-birth. As for the poll, they also found that 62% supported heartbeat legislation. These results suggest that while the majority would support legislation limiting abortion to six weeks of pregnancy, if abortions for life of mother, rape, incest, and medical emergencies are allowed throughout pregnancy, it may be just as publicly acceptable to pass legislation allowing abortion only in those four cases. This is especially so since the pro-abortion opposition and the press will vociferously oppose either to some degree anyway. And only 29% approved of abortion being used as birth control, which leads to the conclusion this results should be very helpful for pro-life candidates who point out that their pro-abortion opponent really supports abortion for any reason, even as a method of birth control. Abortion for birth control is really just another way of describing elective abortion, i.e. abortion for any of the reasons one would use birth control. A pro-abortion candidate's position is that abortion should be available for any and all of those reasons. This may also be helpful in opposing pro-abortion ballot initiatives, which also allow abortion for any reason, even as a method of birth control. The poll also found that 62% opposed using tax dollars to pay for abortion, and only 31% favored taxpayer funding of abortion. These results should give guidance to both pro-life candidates and pro-life advocates in developing successful pro-life strategies and legislation. I do appreciate them telling us their strategy, though honestly, it was pretty obvious if you're paying attention which they're banking on most people not doing. Moving on from the articles, let's look at their merch because of course live action has stuff to sell. Wear it loud, wear it proud. This gorgeous American traditional design perfectly expresses our commitment to protecting the right to life, both for the preborn and human beings at all stages of development. I find it interesting that they claim to protect the right to life for everyone, but that only consists of being against abortion, IVF, and euthanasia. They aren't for anything that would actually improve life, make life more bearable. They just oppose things that aren't their business and don't improve things for anyone. Haley being denied an abortion Keith and Rachel being denied IVF, Mark being denied euthanasia, that's not protecting the right to life. That's meddling in other people's decisions. The most innocent among us are those who have yet to be born, yet our society places them under constant threat. Take a stand for life and wear this shirt demanding that we protect the innocent. This is such a breathlessly stupid thing to say. People who haven't been born yet are the most innocent? Do they hear themselves? And come to think of it, I haven't seen live action advocating for gun control, so I guess school kids, having already been born and all, aren't innocent enough to bother trying to protect. Out of curiosity, I did check Lila and live action socials to see if they said anything about the most recent school shooting. Nothing, just abortion. It's not really about protecting life. It's about banning abortion at all costs. It's cool to be in the movement that has been fighting to save babies since 1973. Wear this vintage style tee and inspire others to join the pro-life movement. Based on fighting to save babies since 1973, I'm guessing the constant threat is abortion being legal. Not someone wanting an abortion, not someone not wanting a kid. The threat is simply the legality of abortion. And if abortion is illegal, there will be no threats to babies or human life in general. Everything will be fine. It's easy to rep the pro-life movement when you're wearing the cutest crop tee. No comment. After all of that, we're finally arriving at the reason for this video. I've gotten a few requests to discuss Live Action's Truth About Sex series, more specifically the How You Think About Sex and the Harms of Contraception videos, which is what led to this video. Turns out that once I looked into it, I just couldn't stop. Though at that, I think How You Think About Sex will be its own video and we'll just focus on abortion and contraception in this one. We have two anti-contraception videos, but before we dive into that, I want to offer some more insight into Live Action's goals. First, we have Live Action News Correspondent Christina Bennett demands equal protection for preborn babies. Now, you might wonder how she does that and, well, she thinks they need to be protected under the 14th Amendment and that fetuses need to be liberated. I'm not entirely sure how you liberate a fetus, but... The 14th Amendment clearly states no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction equal protection of the laws. The horrific reality is that even after the fall of Roe versus Wade, 2,800 babies are killed in the womb by abortion every day in America. That is 117 precious souls every hour. 
almost two children per minute killed in our nation. We must protect every child and stop the lethal violence against our most vulnerable. Frederick Douglass once said, interpreted as it ought to be interpreted, the Constitution is a glorious liberty document. He said the American Constitution is a written instrument full and complete in itself. We have what we need to end abortion and protect preborn children. In Douglas's day, the 14th Amendment was an instrument bringing forth liberty to those who'd been captive through the bonds of slavery. The 14th Amendment guaranteed citizenship to black Americans based on their rights as persons. Douglas declared, abolish slavery tomorrow and not a sentence or a syllable of the Constitution need be altered. He understood the Constitution's purpose and that it was framed to give liberty, not uphold institutions of enslavement. Today, I echo his sentiments. Abolish abortion tomorrow and not a sentence or a syllable of the Constitution need be altered. Everything we need to uphold the right to life for preborn children is in our beloved Constitution. Equal justice under the law for all human beings. This glorious liberty document ensures protection for every person. Our preborn brothers and sisters are persons. They are part of our human family, and our forefathers recognized that when they penned the Constitution. Senator Jacob Howard, who sponsored the 14th Amendment, said it would ensure that even the lowliest and most despised of the human race were guaranteed equal protection. Preborn children have been devalued, despised. Their humanity has been dismissed and their rights discarded. If the Constitution can be seen as a glorious liberty document, how much more glory is found in the lives of God's creation? Every life, a masterpiece, knit together in their mother's womb. The 14th Amendment of our Constitution is the foundation that we have been given by our forefathers to enact legislation to protect the human person. May our members of Congress bring forth laws worthy of upholding that glorious liberty document. We demand laws that will liberate preborn children from the chains of destruction and death, granting them protection and the ability to live out their divine purpose. So how exactly do you give something that requires another person to live equal protection? And what about the pregnant person's right to life and liberty? Or do you forfeit those rights if you become pregnant? These folks say things, but the logic is so lacking, which I guess is why they don't detail what exactly equal protection would look like. Probably because people don't realize what sort of policing of pregnant people this would entail, and they don't want them to know. The next video is a street interview. If you see something, say something, and wow, just when I thought they were going to be decent, they surprised me in a new way. If a teacher notices signs of abuse on their student, their child, should they report it? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I do. Absolutely. There is an obligation there. They legally have to, I'm pretty sure. There's some kind of thing that they have to sign. If you see something, say something. I completely agree. What about if you saw your next door neighbor abusing his or her child? Would you have an obligation to protect that child by speaking up as well? Definitely. I think so. Yes. Yes, I would. So would you say that abusing a child through abortion is wrong? Yep, she did just liken abortion to child abuse. Everyone who said yes, you should report child abuse, said no to the second question, which led to the live action employee spotting their own special facts to change their minds, and an embryo doesn't feel pain, nor does it think. I would say it's things like this that make it so difficult to have a conversation with these folks, but they're not interested in a conversation anyway. Speaking of which, turns out live action has their own news show, and there's a group called Men for Choice, link below, that's been canvassing to add abortion rights to the Florida Constitution. And this is Live Action's opinion of men who believe women should have autonomy over their own bodies. So let me get this straight. A group of young men, 
men for choice, not necessarily seeking to care for or provide for women, but obfuscate their responsibility and duty, are teaming up like some sort of testosterone-laced progressive Avengers and going door to door to rally support so they can continue to be unable to abandon women and children, and the pro-abortion media gives them their blessing? Sounds like a comedy sketch in the making. Women need the right to abortion because men deserve it. I deserve a woman's right to abortion. I deserve a woman's right to abortion. I deserve a woman's right to abortion. Abortion is not really about what women want, and it never has been. Abortion is about men, pro-choice men. So ladies, thanks for marching. Because you're not really marching for yourselves. You're marching for us. Conservatives always tell on themselves. They can't imagine someone doing something because it's the right thing to do. There must be something in it for themselves. Anyway, on to the main event, contraception. And considering how hard live action, and Lila herself, go against abortion, this is truly bizarre. Does anyone remember if live action has always been anti-contraception? Because I think this is new and it's concerning. But there's that old adage, give them an inch and they'll take a mile. They got Roe overturned. Now, instead of focusing on supporting those affected, they're turning their sights on contraception and IVF. I have two videos from Lila, one from her Truth About Sex series on the live action channel titled The Harms of Contraception and an interview she did on her channel titled This Is Why Contraception Is Harmful. I hope you all are as excited as I am. We'll start with her Truth About video as it's the shortest and Lila starts off strong. Here's an amazing fact about sex that people like to pretend is not true. Sex makes babies. I know, shocking, right? I'm floored. Learn something new every day. Anyway, Lila informs us that sex has two purposes, to create new life and to mentally, emotionally, and physically bond a man and woman together. Yes, this video is very heteronormative. And from here, Lila gives us a science lesson and I'm going to need a better source for this. Get this, even when a woman is not in her fertile window during the month, if a couple has sex, the man's semen still bonds the woman to the man and the man to the woman, giving her nutrients and creating antibodies that prepares her body for a healthy pregnancy with his child. To be fair, Lila kind of shares a source for this claim, but it's only on the screen and it's very hard to see, and she doesn't offer a link, just the title. And well, I'm not a scientist, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but the gist of that study is that, yes, exposure to the male partner cells can play a role in lowering early onset preeclampsia. However, it also notes that late onset preeclampsia is much more common and concludes with optimizing pre-pregnancy weight and controlling gestational weight gain may be the most effective ways to prevent preeclampsia. It says nothing about how unprotected sex bonds a woman to a man and, well, Sex with protection can also be bonding, and there are ways that don't even involve sex that you can bond with an intimate partner. For that matter, you can have unprotected sex with someone and not feel a bond with them. I know folks like Lila like to pretend that if you have sex, you're giving a piece of your heart away or something, but that's not actually how it works. Sex is not the one-stop shop for commitment or intimacy. All that being said, let's not forget how strange it is that someone who has literally made outlawing abortion their life's work is encouraging people not to use contraception. And she is leaving no stone unturned. To hear Lila tell it, birth control will actually make your life worse. In addition, if a couple rejects the procreative possibility of sex with the attitude that a baby would be unwanted or rejected, this also violates the design of sex and opens the door to a host of other problems. I think it's pretty safe to say that Lila believes if you don't want kids, you shouldn't be having sex and thus you shouldn't bother getting married. On that note, she so kindly informs us what's really wrong with contraception. It's not a coincidence that a culture that acts like sex isn't supposed to make babies and is saturated with contraception has high abortion rates. And so that is the fundamental problem with contraception. It violates the purpose for which sex exists. So to be clear, when she said there's two purposes for sex, unity and procreation, she actually meant there's just one because if you're not at least open to procreation, at least in Lila's world, you can't have unity. Good to know. Lala goes on to tell us the side effects of contraception. Of course, abortion is the first one. And no, she doesn't pause to think that encouraging people who don't want kids ever or at that moment to not use contraception would increase abortions. She does, however, share a link about how half of US abortion patients reported using contraception in the month they got pregnant. And I don't want to be mean, but is she really this stupid or is she banking on her audience to not think too much about what she's saying? Contraception doesn't cause abortions. Contraception helps people not get pregnant in the first place. 
<sighs> Lala's opinion is that contraception makes it easier to engage in sex without being married. And I hate to be the one to tell her that there are married couples who don't want kids or don't want more kids or who are waiting to have kids. Marriage doesn't correlate to give me babies. Though, of course, Lila is Catholic, so I'm sure that colors her perspective. I'm going to skip her pro-birth propaganda, but I did want to share this graph for Team Maid. Apparently, Planned Parenthood has a plot to get people on birth control so they have sex without commitment. Remember that commitment is marriage. Eventually get pregnant and then come back to Planned Parenthood for an abortion. And she means it like it sounds. Lila thinks Planned Parenthood gives out contraception so people will eventually come back for an abortion. She also informs us that many forms of hormonal contraceptives also act as abortifacients designed to not only prevent conception, but also implantation making the woman's uterine lining hostile to a newly created embryo and causing an abortion of that new life. I mentioned in a previous video that folks like Lila are trying to redefine preborn to fertilized egg so that a fertilized egg not implanting would be considered an abortion. And case in point. Lila also informs us that abortion rates drop not because of increased contraceptive use, but because of an increase in women carrying pregnancies to term which is so interesting because I have articles saying that it's because of the increased use of long acting contraceptives, access to free birth control, and the curious fact that abortion rates go down when it's made legal and go up when there are more restrictions. Go figure. But Lila isn't here to figure out how to reduce abortion rates. She's here to make it so illegal it's unthinkable. Moving on, Lila also blames birth control for the decline in marriage and increase in divorce. And she does this very literally. As we have seen the dramatic increase of use in contraception in our society, we have seen a dramatic decline in marriage. Furthermore, the use of the most frequent methods of family planning, the hormonal pill, sterilization, condom use, and abortion correlates to an increased likelihood of divorce in married couples. You might notice that Lila doesn't use a corresponding chart of increasing contraceptive use with increasing divorce rates because the divorce rate has been declining for decades, which ruins her argument. Still, could someone please tell her that correlation isn't causation? Anyway, Lila also blames a disconnect from our bodies on contraception and also says it's toxic and has unhealthy side effects. She does a scroll of the side effects of birth control while she speaks. And I would like to note that again, birth control and abortion are actually safer in the US than pregnancy and all medications have side effects. It's important to find what works for you and to talk with your doctor about it. Lila's final point is STIs and yes, contraception doesn't protect against those. And you know what would help? Comprehensive sex ed, not abstinence only. We already know the latter doesn't work. But of course, Lila says sex belongs within a loving marriage. And for anyone wondering, Lila endorses natural family planning. Well, maybe endorses was a bit strong. Now, it is important to understand part of the mystery and the beauty of marriage and sex is a certain surrender of control over the origins of life. As human beings, we can plan pregnancy to a certain degree, but saying yes to marriage and sex is ultimately saying yes to the possibility of life with all its risks and joys. I'm not surprised, but I am still baffled by how someone so vehemently anti-abortion is encouraging situations that could potentially lead to an abortion. That's pretty much it for this video though. Lila waxes poetic about children, explains NFP, and says that people deserve education about their bodies, which I completely agree with. And then she says that couples using fertility awareness have a lower divorce rate, the source for which is a website about natural family planning that republished a study done by a Catholic medical association. Forgive me for being skeptical. And that's it for the live action video. Now we'll venture over to Lila's own channel where she brought on Dr. Janet Smith to discuss why contraception is harmful. And for anyone wondering, her doctorate is in, well, she actually has two honorary doctorates, one in Christian ethics and no idea what the other one is in. And she's a Catholic, so I'm sure her take on contraception is not at all influenced by her faith. Though, funnily enough, this is how Lila begins the video. Today, we're talking to Dr. Janet Smith, who is a philosopher, moral theologian, PhD, a professor who has been working for decades and tackling questions about sexual ethics and contraception. Now, in today's episode, we're going to break down the topic of contraception from a non-religious point of view about why and what the harms are of contraception. I don't like to assume bad faith, but it's very clear that by omitting some facts about Dr. Smith, Lila is hoping viewers think they're getting an unbiased scientific view about the harms of contraception. But in reality, 
It's one anti-contraception Catholic talking to another anti-contraception Catholic whose PhD is in Christian ethics. I'm unimpressed. Moving on to the interview, Dr. Smith tells us that her degree is in classical languages, Latin and Greek, which is great, but that doesn't make her qualify to fearmonger about contraception. Lala shares that Dr. Smith taught her a lot years ago, which makes sense since Dr. Smith shares Lala's belief that without contraception, abortion wouldn't exist. Because, somehow, contraception divorced sex from procreation in people's minds, therefore we don't equate procreation with sex and thus we think procreating is bad. I think I did a pretty good job of explaining what they're getting at, but it sounds so bizarre I am doubting my interpretation. When I was a young person, it was when they were liberalizing the laws on abortion and I got very interested in it and uh, held some of the first demonstrations ever outside an abortion clinic in um, Iowa City in Iowa. And the more I did that over the years, I made a connection between contraception and abortion. I, that I could see that contraception completely changed people's understanding of sexuality um, to the point where they were um, ready to have sex with individuals, men, women with men and men with women with whom they had no intention of having a child. And so that when a pregnancy occurred, it was a disaster. And, um, and hence a great need for contraception. The fact that contraception, that abortion was legalized not long after contraception became widely available is not an accident. There's actually kind of a causal effect there. There's many contributing factors, but this is a major factor. I guess I did forget one part. They think contraception made people more willing to sleep with people they wouldn't otherwise sleep with. I guess they're forgetting things like mother's homes, Madeline laundries, visiting an aunt for nine months, and the perennial favorite, shotgun weddings. Though I guess that would be okay because, hey, at least you got married. Personally, I come from three generations of shotgun weddings, and that's including my very Catholic great-grandmother in the 1930s. But personal anecdotes aside, I would say it was the changing social attitudes around sex that made people more likely to sleep with someone they weren't married to or had no intention of marrying rather than contraception. Anyway, as usual, I have a question. What damages are there from a contraceptive lifestyle? Can someone please tell me what a contraceptive lifestyle is? Does Dr. Smith genuinely believe that women on birth control are out there wilding and getting monthly abortions? I have to say, I've been on the pill twice and neither time did I think I could sleep with whoever I want. Granted, I was quite young, but I would be willing to bet that's not the thought process of most people considering contraception. Anyway, Dr. Smith discovered that contraception is horrible for women's bodies, psyche, relationships, and then she takes a turn. It leads to acceptance of say homosexuality and transgenderism, all these things are connected conceptually. No, they're not. Dr. Smith is connecting them because she's a bigot and so conveniently for herself, all the things she doesn't like are connected. Lila jumps in at this point and asks Dr. Smith to explain how abortion is connected to contraception using research and common sense. The latter is in short supply in Lila's interview, I'm afraid, and I don't trust their interpretations of the former. Dr. Smith suggests we look it up online and then she says something odd. Most of the time where you find a, a reduction of abortion because of contraception has to do in a country where abortion has been the means of birth control, where people didn't have access to contraception. I'm so curious if she's speaking legally or illegally because I'm having a hard time imagining a country that has legalized abortion but not birth control. Dr. Smith does go on to mention Russian women having an average of eight abortions because of a lack of birth control. I couldn't find eight, but I did find an LA Times article from 1986 talking about Soviet women having four or five abortions because of a lack of safe and effective contraceptives, which ruins their whole point that contraception increases abortion. Dr. Smith's own example shows otherwise, but she blithely ignores that and right after telling us that if you introduce contraception to a population that didn't have it before, it may reduce abortion rates for a time. And then she adds, and possibly over time, <clears throat> excuse me, a kind of an increase in um, abortion because again, it, it facilitates relationships that are not receptive to a child. So then, why have abortion rates in Russia been in a steep decline since the 90s? Per these two brainiacs, it should have lowered a bit with the introduction of contraception and then ticked back up due to those relationships Dr. Smith thinks contraception creates. But hey, let's have another example. You can look at our culture, just look at the number of abortions throughout the, uh, the 20th century. And as contraception became more and more available, the number of abortions climbed and climbed and climbed. I'm looking at it right now. 
and it's on the screen. And sure, it climbed until 1980 and has been mostly falling since with some spikes. Still not conforming to the narrative Dr. Smith is painting. Speaking of painting, she informs us that in her father's day, he was born in 1921, 85% of women, men, couples in general, not sure, were versions at their wedding. I would like her source for that claim because I couldn't find one. Anyway, Dr. Smith rails about contraception and relationships for a while and unsurprisingly, she doesn't like feminism. She also waxes poetic about the good old days when the teens having sex were the rebels. And just a quick note. And honestly, for women, we thought we had no reason to say no. And the men thought we had no reason to say no. So just the pressure, the pressure. You couldn't say what happens if I get pregnant. Um, you couldn't say that. They should all use a contraceptive or I'll use a contraceptive. I don't want to is reason enough to not have sex with someone. And she's dreaming if she thinks women weren't pressured into sex before contraception. Her story does make me wonder though if she's also against condoms. After all, even if, let's say, the pill were done away with, men could still pull out a condom and say, it's fine, I have protection. I have a feeling I'm putting more thought into her arguments than she is, and I can't let this go. I mean, studies do show that in the 60s, particularly when the pill was being introduced, there, there weren't that many uh, abortions, so it, it exploded once and uh, contraception became available. That is so disingenuous. It rose after row, it had nothing to do with contraception. And somehow she gets worse. There was no such thing as date rape on campuses, all right? Where did date rape come from? I mean, guys think that every girl is taking contraception. And guys think that that means that every girl is sexually available. It's rare that I'm speechless, but Wow, this woman is actually saying that contraception causes date rape. This is so irresponsible. Women aren't raped because it's assumed they're on birth control. Rape wasn't invented alongside the pill. And Lala just says, wow. And his view wow. is sex with other guys. What's wrong with me? Why not me? All right, and if she's protesting, it's like, well, she doesn't really mean that. She's taking contraception. She can't really mean it. Sex is no big deal. That is not an average person's thought process. Those are the justifications of a rapist. It's not like I had much respect for Dr. Smith before, but wow, I'm going to take a moment. She goes on to say that when you start having sex with a person, without marriage of course, the relationship begins to lack clarity. Apparently Dr. Smith has forgotten that humans can use their words. She goes on about how contraception has ruined relationships for a while and throws in some purity culture nonsense because of course. And I have to say, for a doctor, she sure uses a lot of personal anecdotes. Anyway, Lila asks what the harms are, and of course, Dr. Smith starts out with a personal anecdote. And I'm not sure how to say this, but Dr. Smith brings up three Puerto Rican women who died when Enovid was being trialed, and the way they use those women to push their own agenda is gross. It is not a sign that birth control is bad. It's a sign that the doctors involved were unethical. They went to Puerto Rico on purpose looking for impoverished women and they didn't tell them it was a drug trial. Following this, Dr. Smith rails about the side effects of contraception. And again, if you're experiencing side effects, please talk to your doctor and advocate for yourself. There's a lot of options, so it could be a question of finding the right one, which I know Dr. Smith and Lila would disagree with. And no, science has not concluded that birth control fundamentally changes who you are or who you're attracted to. Speaking of science, we also get a lecture about women's cycles and I just want to correct something real quick. Talking about a hypothetical woman who doesn't want to get pregnant, but also doesn't want to use birth control. Now that is incredibly healthy for a woman. She's putting no chemicals in her body. None of those side effects, none of those risks of stroke and cancer, et cetera. Well, I mean, natural law just simply works by saying that nature is good, all right? And if you cooperate with nature, things will go well. If you violate nature, things will go badly. Pregnancy can cause a stroke. Pregnancy has side effects. Pregnancy can be fatal. Just because it's natural doesn't mean it's without risk. But I don't think Dr. Smith lives on this planet. Couples who use natural family planning who very much make a connection between a woman's fertility and sex and babies. It's a natural connection. They never forget it. Sex leads to babies. Contraception tries to take that possibility out. Sex only leads to babies if I want it to. Whereas couples who are not contracepting, they understand sex leads to babies. They, NFP couples generally talk not about she got pregnant, they talk about we got pregnant. Mm. And they say we had a surprise pregnancy rather than an accidental pregnancy. Because 
we knew we knew what could happen. All right. It wasn't an accident. I always say it's not an accident getting pregnant through sexual intercourse. It means that something's gone right, not that something's gone wrong. And so you say, all right, somehow we miscalculated the fertility, but we knew it could lead to a baby. We're married. Let's just have it. Let's just enjoy this new gift that we've got. And so, and again, it, it just solidifies a relationship as opposed to saying, we didn't want a baby. We took precautions against a baby and now we've got a baby. All right. As opposed to saying, we love each other. We know that sex leads to babies. We want to build a family together. Sometimes we're going to try to manage when that baby comes. But if it, if we don't succeed, it's okay. We know what life is all about. This happens. This is such a weird idea. If contraception didn't exist, every child would be warmly welcomed. How does one get to a place where that's not only an actual thought they have, but one they confidently share with the world? And that is that. I would like to thank the person who suggested this, per their submission, the live action truth about sex series, especially the birth control and how you think about sex episodes. They enraged me. I can see why. I have a low tolerance of lies, especially when it's a subject the person isn't even qualified to lie about. Look out for the, no, that would sound wrong. Uh, look out for the second live action video next month. Someone also linked to live action's website and a video Sarah Therese did for them and asked my opinions on her and live action. I'm not really familiar with Sarah, but my opinion of live action is low and the more I learn, the lower it gets. We'll talk more about that in November. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oh,